Hi everyone, uh, Kerry Christie here, and I'm here to talk to you about the brand new sphere that I've designed. A lot of you are very familiar with the current design, which is similar to this. This is actually uh, the first one I ever built, and it was a good trial that weak spots and things like that, so it was a learning experience. I went from there all the way up to R6, which is what the club has which is a 11 millimeter thick piece and there's actually 24 of these that go together that actually create the entire sphere. I think it's a pretty good design overall. There are a couple different things that I didn't like about it that I wanted to improve upon, but it was a very 3D printable design which was nice, even though it was a little bit difficult to print. One of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to reduce thickness on it because this is up at 11 millimeters and Getting the magnets on the inside closer to the head means that you have smaller magnets, still have the same type of attraction, which keeps the weight down in the head. There's a lot of different things that happen. So what I was shooting for is I was shooting for making it thinner. Thinner also means lighter, which means the ball can have a little bit more control with the mechanism inside. So I went from the one that I ended up releasing to the club, which was R6, revision number six. And I went from there, the next step that I did is I actually went to a 8 millimeter thick version. You could actually see the difference. The more and more I went around with the design, not only was it very difficult to tool because you have weird angles of screws and things like that, but also the assembly time on it took a long time, as many of you know, with the 3D primitive. So I started going down the path, and by this time I think I'm about revision 10. So now what you have is three of these pieces that would go together to create a full triangle. And they changed over time. They went from no ribs underneath, thing it out, going with ribs underneath. Uh, this one actually had the uh, ribs that go over the circles, uh, actually stuck into these little slots here. Uh, failed, didn't work. <laughs> Um, it went from there to this type of design where I actually had tabs sticking out, which is nice because they can just run the screw through it. But once again, I'm going for a production version of this, and the issue with something like this is when they make the tool, it's essentially two big pieces. And then what they have are slides, which are the pieces which pull out to create the other holes. Well, it's impossible to have a slide for this center hole. So that made it so you couldn't actually create this hole in the rib kept going farther and farther down the path, still working on that design, doing different things like removing ribs, uh, this version of it. I had nuts that you drop into place for the piece that screwed onto here, very similar to the TNM sphere, but I didn't like having multiple pieces that needed to be bolted together to accomplish the, the goal either. So as I moved more and more and more down the path, more and more designs, I got into the oh, R, 20 kind of range, revision number 20. At that point, what I had done is I'd gone from three little pieces to one large triangle piece. And the beautiful thing about this design is it's super simple. You only have eight pieces. These are essentially underneath here, like this, to create the, the skeleton of it. But the more and more I looked at not only my original designs, all the other designs that are out there, uh, with exception of the aluminum ones, this actual joint, when you roll the sphere, when the axle point goes from here to here, so the sphere is rolling like this. As you roll, you inevitably roll over this part right here. By definition, you have not only the skinniest portion of the sphere right here, so it's going to be the weakest, you also have a transition point straight across here so it can crack easy. And most of the time your ribs are in this orientation. So what happens, you have no added strength here. It just simply can crack if you put enough pressure, especially as you go to a thinner and thinner and thinner type of design. And as I just mentioned, as far as where the rib locations are, all my designs had the ability to have the ribs in this orientation. Well, as you know, B8 or maybe don't know, a couple of the actual orange circles, the orientation of this portion here was rotated by 45 degrees. That made it so this didn't work out so hot either. 
So what I did was I completely rethought the project. How do I get easy to assemble, super strong, get rid of the joints and things like that, and in the end, this is the piece that I came up with. It's light, it's strong, tons of ribs underneath that you can see. And what it does is it mounts in a completely different spot. Rather than mounting here, like these did, this one actually jumps the gap. So now your strong portion or your, your skinniest portion of the sphere, which would be the weakest, has no joints. All your joints are actually underneath the center portion of the triangle. So this is what the sphere looks like completely. So now if you look at it, you've got joints here, but your actual triangle pieces, let me step back a little bit. You don't have your joint here, you have your joint here. As you're rolling, if you get pressure here, what happens is it would want to split along this joint, but then it hits this point. And the pressure can't continue, so the pressure essentially dissipates. And what happens is it makes it extremely strong. On top of that, in two different areas, you have your axle mounts, which are supporting those joints. And then this guy, which you guys know is the triangle for the plug. Well, since this is our weak spot here in the sphere, the second you take this and you bolt it over it, suddenly what you have is no real weak spots in the sphere anymore. Everything is overlapping joints, and by overlapping joints and by essentially triangulating this joint, you don't have any spots in the sphere that want to separate. Where these guys come together, you no longer have that weak joint. Everything in this design, every piece supports every other piece. So I'll step on that a little bit. The ribs. One of the things I wanted to have is I want lots of access into the inside of the sphere because we're putting drivetrains in there. Drivetrains mean that you have lots of different large parts that you're building or need to get into the sphere to actually make it work. I didn't want to have to completely disassemble it. So there are some designs out there where there's almost no access to the inside and that to me wasn't acceptable. Going back to the ribs, I also didn't want to spend a lot of time taking the ribs in and out, and I wanted something where you could go at 45 degree angles. So if you look at the new design, the ribs can be rotated to any one of these tabs. Now the cool thing about it is the ribs themselves, even though they have screws, they're actually not screwed in. The way that this works is a pressure fit in place. So they simply pop right out. They slide into these slots into the middle. Now, you can take the rib and go from here to here really easy. Now, there may be some current concerns as to, okay, well, if they pop into place, what's to keep them from popping out of place once you get them in there? Well, remember when I talked about everything being layers? This is the exact same thing. Once you take the orange panels, and mind you, this is designed to work with the TNM bolt-on panels. Once you take the orange panels and you run the screw through these four locations, which line up here, what that does is that locks the shape of these ribs into place. So these ribs can no longer bend. If the ribs can't bend, it's impossible for them to pull out. And I've actually taken one of these orange rings, I've bolted it on, and through the opposite side, I have punched at it, and it doesn't come out. So they're held in there extremely strong. One of the things about this design, by default and by design, is when there's pressure put on the ribs, they inherently help to lock other joints in place. By bolting here, we're locking this joint into place. So everything in the sphere is designed to support every other part of the sphere. Having the TM TNM panels bolting on over top of this supports this. Having the orange rings bolting on top of this supports this. So the more pieces that you stack onto it, the better. This sphere is only eight millimeters thick. So compared to the old 11 millimeter, it's substantially thicker, or thinner, sorry. <laughs> uh, it actually weighs quite a bit less. This one, the production one, once it's done, is right now 
the actual sphere portion, not including the ribs, is right around five pounds. Sounds like maybe a lot or maybe not. The printable sphere, the one that pretty much everybody's printing right now, is around six and a half out of PLA. Six to six and a half out of PLA. The material that this is going to be made out of is a glass fiber injected material. From a strength standpoint, if you were to look at it from a sheer uh, bendability standpoint and flexibility standpoint, it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 to 40 times stronger than the PLA. So there's almost zero flex. It's extremely strong. And then once you go through and add on the different layers, it just becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and text me on it or uh, message me on it or go ahead and put it on the BB Builders Group or on the Sphere Builders Group. The plan at this point is I'm actually actively tooling this. The design will be off of a hard tool. It's not going to be 3D printed. Uh, the 3D print files, as far as the main sphere, are not going to be available. And that's mainly because the type of design is going to work really good with a injected molded design, but I don't know if it's going to work quite as good on a uh, PLA printed design. So that will not be available, but the rib files will be available. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, selling the actual sphere itself, the injected molded pieces, uh, and then the ribs and the screws and things like that are actually going to be an option. So you can pick up just the sphere panels, so the only thing that you need to do is print just the ribs and I'll make those files available, uh, or I can get you the entire sphere ready to go. The other nice thing is it's going to be relatively cheap to ship, because in the end what we have is a box this big by this big by about that, that will fit the entire sphere. So from the standpoint of shipping, it will be relatively cheap as well. The smaller the box, the better when it comes down to it. So if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, message me or go on the Sphere Builders group on uh, Facebook, Sphere Builders group, uh, or on the BB-8 forum. I'll answer messages there or the actual BB-8 uh, webpage. If you have any questions, let me know. My name is Kerry, and thanks a lot.